The accident that happened to Ladies Code shocked the world of K-pop. As their car slipped while they were returning from an event, two members ended up losing their lives, and the remaining three are still left with the traumatizing memories. For all of you that don't know, Ladies Code are a girl group that are under Polaris Entertainment. They debuted in 2013 with Bad Girl, and the original lineup consisted of five members, Ashley, Nisei, Unbi, Sojong, and Juni. Though their success didn't compare to that of the groups that debuted at the same time, their releases still did pretty well, and they were respected in the industry. Then something horrible happened. On September 3rd, 2014, Polaris Entertainment released a statement about the members of Ladies Code getting into a car accident. The statement explained that they were on the way back to Seoul after attending the recording of the KBS open concert at DGIST as it was their last schedule of the Kiss Kiss promotions. Inside the van were the five members, the road manager, Mr. Park, who was also driving the vehicle, one of their managers, and one of their stylists. Near Suwon, the back wheel of the car slipped off. To make things worse, the road was wet because of the rain, and this caused the car to tumble. The car rolled several times and hit the road divider, which caused a lot of damage to the roof and the side of the car. If that wasn't enough, the police, highway patrol, and the road traffic authority reported that the car was speeding by over 30 kilometers per hour above the speed limit in the Yongdong Expressway. There were suspicions that the car carrying the members and the staff had a problem with the back tire, as it was suspected that it had fallen off. Or at least, this is what the manager of the girls, who was only referred to as Pak, had claimed when he was questioned by the police. However, the police concluded that the back tire had fallen off because of the accident and was not the cause of it. There were also rumors that the accident was caused by Sasang fans. There's an infamous Sasang fan known as Gin Yotin, or mostly referred to as Selja, who was known for allegedly harming idols in various ways. It was rumored that she poisoned BAP's Himtan and put glue in Dobang Shingi's Yunho's drink. There were rumors that Selja had also predicted that a popular Korean celebrity would pass away in 2014, and some even linked the accident to her. However, all the accusations against her are rumors, and especially the Lady Code accident one, so take these rumors with a grain of salt. The main cause of the crash was concluded to be going over the speed limit. Polaris Entertainment also revealed that the airbag in the driver and passenger seat were not open and that none of the members were wearing seatbelts. After the police investigation, Mr. Puck was arrested in November of 2014 for causing the accident and eventually confessed to speeding. He also shared that he had called emergency services immediately after the accident happened. Mr. Pak was sentenced to a year and two months in prison for causing the crash, as he had failed to reach an agreement with the family of the deceased before the trial took place. Therefore, the guilty verdict was handed down. Unfortunately, the accident ended up taking lives. Member Unbi passed away at the scene, as it was announced by the company a few hours after the crash took place. She wasn't wearing a seatbelt when the car slipped. According to eyewitnesses, Unbi was taken to the hospital after the accident happened, but unfortunately passed away as her injuries were too severe for her to survive. Other members also got injured. Thankfully, Ashley and Juni only sustained minor injuries, but the others weren't as lucky. At the time, Dise was unconscious and in the ICU because of her critical condition. Sojong was also under critical condition, but regained consciousness and underwent surgery for the facial fractures that were caused by the accident. Polaris Entertainment said, Sojong is recovering well from the surgery. When her condition improves, she will leave the hospital, but for the time being, she will be treated here. The agency also refrained from telling her about Umbi passing until she was stabilized because they didn't want to worsen her condition, so Ashley and Juni were the only Ladies Code members present at Umbi's funeral. Though, she picked up on what was happening as she kept seeing family and staff members going around her in mourning attire. She even asked, why does everyone keep wearing black? Eventually, she found out about Umbi passing away by looking at the news on her phone. Ashley and Juni were the only ones who stood by Umbi's mother's side throughout the service and hugged her when she was crying. There were many idols present at the service, and others expressed their condolences. It was later confirmed that Unbi wasn't removed from the vehicle when the accident happened. Fire department officials stated, There were three girls, Ashley, Juni, staff members standing outside the vehicle, and three girls who were in the vehicle unconscious, Unbi, Rise, Sojong. Rise was bleeding from her head and had external injuries to her face. The situation was extremely chaotic with Rise not breathing or having a pulse. We were forced to perform CPR on her right away. The bad news didn't stop after that. On September 7th, 2014, it was reported that Rise had also passed away. She had an emergency brain surgery after the accident and had been unconscious since. Polaris Entertainment said that because of Rise's head injury, she was moved to the hospital and received surgery, but ultimately passed away. She had two funerals. One was held in Seoul Memorial Park, South Korea on September 9th, 2014, and was attended by many idols. After the first funeral, Rise's body was cremated and then taken back to Japan for the second funeral that was held only for family and close friends. One of the most heartbreaking things about this was that Umbi and 
Umbi say we're very close. At the dinner that took place the night of the accident, Umbi was joking around and said, We did well, right? Even after this album, Ladies Code will continue. No one will give up and say, I'm fine, thank you. It's not our last night, right? Ladies Code fighting. Another devastating thing is that on August 12th, 2014, Dese talked to her fans on her Twitter account. A fan asked, Which member of Ladies Code would you rather leave with you and feel very comfortable with? To which Dese responded, Umbi. A year after the accident happened on August 22nd, 2015, Ladies Code held a memorial concert in Japan to honor Dese and Unbi. This was because before passing away, the two deceased members were hoping to perform in Japan, a dream that was never achieved. This was the first appearance of the members ever since the accident. Along with Ashley, Sotong, Duni, Young Dong Moon, Sonu, Rumblefish, and Han Hee Doon also performed at the concert. The concert also marked the first performance of I Will Smile Even If It Hurts All, a tribute song to the deceased members that was released on September 7th, the day that Dise passed away. All proceedings from the concert went towards a memorial project and other charity activities. The members spoke about the accident for the first time in 2019 and how it affected them. They appeared in an episode of Channel A's Eye Contact, where Ashley and Juni invited Sol Jong to discuss the accident and how it affected Sol Jong's birthday, which unfortunately was on the same day of the accident. Ashley explained that they talked about Unbi and Dise amongst themselves, but have never spoken about what happened on the day of the tragic accident. Sol Jong then shared in a private interview, After we did a broadcast that day, we went somewhere pretty far away to do an event. She started explaining that it had rained a lot that day and everyone had been pretty tired. They stopped somewhere to rest and Sol Jong went to the bathroom, but once she came out, the member surprised her with a cake made of choco pies with birthday candles on top. They sang to her and then apologized because they had limited chances of what to do for her birthday. Sol Jong continued, I told them it was okay because we were busy and then I got in and we drove off. We were so tired, so I fell asleep on the way. To be honest, that's my last memory of that. I think I was probably taken to the hospital then. Sol Jong then went on to explain how she had been injured and how she and Ashley had found out about what had happened through the news and started crying. Sol Jong teared up as she recalled how nobody let her know what was happening and how that caused her great pain. To make things even sadder, she revealed that the members didn't eat the birthday cake they made for her because of their diets and how they wished that they had shared the cake together. The accident happening on her birthday affected her greatly and she hasn't celebrated it since. Sol Jong said, After that day, I didn't think of September 3rd as my birthday. It wasn't a day for me to be congratulated. It would be strange to go see Unbi in the morning and then have a birthday party in the evening, wouldn't it? The girls went on about how they couldn't quite accept that the members were gone and how they felt like they had just gone on holiday. But the thing was very real and they couldn't even record or perform the songs the five of them had performed together without tearing up. They ended the interview by tearfully promising that they'd talk more about the accident in the future in order to move on. The accident is still one of the most tragic things that has ever happened in K-pop and the members are still affected, so I hope that they get to live the rest of their lives in peace and slowly move on. They've been through so much already. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys!